Welcome to More Than Words, a podcast about treating the whole child brought to you by the Reading and Language Learning Center. I'm your host, Tristan, and today I'm joined by academic therapist and executive function coach, Stephanie Gerstenblith, to discuss executive function and organization. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? Good. How are you? Awesome. We're excited to have you here. This is going to be great. I feel like it's a good time in the year to chat about organization, executive function. We've seen things start to happen in the school year, and this is a good starting, or this is a good point to address some stuff we started to see. So let's start with an introduction on you. Tell us about yourself and what you do. So I'm Stephanie Gerstenblit, and I'm an executive function coach. I also teach students to read following the Orton-Gillingham approach. I founded Enhancing Your Strengths at the end of January 2020. Oh, wow. That's fabulous. Um, So if people were looking for you online or also in person, where would they find you? Sure. So I'm located in Montgomery County, Maryland, specifically in North Bethesda, the Rockville area. And most of my team members and I have been working virtually over the years, but um, I just started going back into schools last school year. So I'm doing a little bit of work in the local independent schools, but I am still mostly online. My team members are all virtual because they're located uh, in New York, New Jersey, Virginia. (laughs) So I am, yeah, everybody, my clients mostly come from here and then I connect them with their, their coaches virtually. Right. And, and um and if you wanted to find me um on the web, my my uh, website is enhancingyourstrengths.com. And then the same goes for um Facebook and Instagram. I'm enhancing your strengths. Perfect. Okay. So I'll list that in the show notes so folks can find you guys. Great. Yeah. So let's hop into our questions of the day. And we have a couple episodes in the past that have talked about executive function, but I always think it's really good to start with a baseline understanding. So do you mind defining what executive functioning actually means? Sure. Um, And it's funny because there are actually a lot of really very academically worded definitions for executive (laughs) function out there. (laughs) Um, But I like to keep things simple. And I'll just say that executive function is how the brain helps us execute tasks. So It enables us to plan, organize, remember things, prioritize, pay attention, and get started on tasks. And it also helps us to regulate our thoughts, emotions, and actions. Right. Okay. So that sounds like a big portion of how you get organized, right? So how does that all affect organization? So organization is actually one of the primary executive functions. Um, with the organization is the ability to create and maintain systems to keep track of information or materials. So typically, when we think of organization or really this organization, <laughs> um, we, we imagine messy rooms and closets. Right. But people actually have really different, they can have different organizational strengths and weaknesses. So I have students whose rooms and backpacks are actually really organized, but then they have difficulty organizing their schedules, like their time Mm, yeah, and their thoughts or ideas. So writing papers is really difficult for them. Just organizing, you know, what am I going to write? How am I going to do this in a paragraph? Um, That type of organization can be really tough for them, but they're fine with things, you know, and, and then there are others who can write beautifully in a really organized manner, but then they have trouble finding a space to actually do their work because there's stuff all over the place. Uh, so I, I figured for this conversation, you wanted to keep it to organization being organizing things. Is that what you were typically? I mean, either way about? it works because okay. honestly, I have, I have thought about both ways of organization, but never really realized that executive function can affect both. And that, you know, you could have someone with a very tidy room, but like thoughts and self-expression could be kind of, or like the way they express, you know, like written expression can be kind of wonky. So Mm -hmm. either way, if you wanted to talk about, if you wanted to focus on one or if you bring the other one in, that's totally fine. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so if you wanted to start with the physical things, we can go down that route and talk about what kind of organizational strategies have you seen help people get their space in order? 
Sure. Um, so there are a lot of strategies out there. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say that some strategies work for some people and not for others and vice versa. And also a strategy can work for some time <laughs> and then maybe it doesn't work any longer. Right. <laughs> so people need to kind of shift and change their strategies. And I, I do the same thing. You know, sometimes I'm working with a physical planner. Sometimes I use my calendar online. I'll which I'll write to do to lists on paper. And then I also have tasks on my, on my phone. So, you know, it, and it's really okay. So having um, just to start it with like your space, organizing space. Um, I'm going to take this from Seth Perler, who's a pretty well-known executive function coach. Yeah. And he talks about having a sacred study space. And this is something that we uh, suggest to our students where they have a place that's clear of clutter, um, that hopefully they're straightening out at least once a week that only has what they need to focus on their work. So no distractions and something that's kind of, you know, personalized to them, uh, that they are going to want to sit there and do their work. It's helpful for students to use notebooks and folders that are color coded for each class. And sometimes people find that using an accordion folder is helpful mm -hmm. where students can just slide their papers in instead of right. having to open a binder because binders can be a real big pain. Yeah. And so just keeping things really simple is is the best organizational strategy you can <laughs> probably come up with <laughs> just <Right>. overall. <laughs> uh, and then another strategy could be, you know, doing a backpack overhaul. That's another Seth oh. Perler thing where on a regular basis, like weekly going through a child's backpack or even, you know, a student should do it on their own, ideally, but parents can start, you know, as they, when they're younger, but going through the backpack, taking out all the junk, yeah. all the food that doesn't need to be in there <laughs> and <laughs> those papers crumpled up at the very bottom, all that. Um, there should be a, a time, you know, maybe at the end of the week or over the weekend where um, parents and students will go through the backpack and figure out you know, what, what can we do to make this a little more organized for the next week? Right. <laughs> that is also a good point that all the snacks that like get left in a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Gross. Oh my gosh, gross. <laughs> Gym clothes, other stuff, you know, sports, right. sweaty t-shirts. I've seen it all. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, so it sounds like, like you said, keeping it simple um, and having just like small things you can do that help with the bigger picture of organization and maybe the parents can help get that started. Um, exactly. So what would you say are things you've seen that are strategies that don't necessarily work for those that are struggling with that executive function? Sure. So this is more with uh, organization of time, but mm -hmm. keeping <laughs> all my students, almost all my students tell me that they keep their due dates and test dates in their head oh. and they insist that's okay I'm like <laughs> yeah, no no <laughs> that does not work <laughs> obviously that's why their parents call me they're not getting their work done they're not studying for their tests they're not you know they're not turning it in so that's uh, a huge one yeah. so yeah that, that's related to memory but it's also right. you know just having uh, the, if you don't have an organized place to put your the dates and and things that you need to remember, you're really going to have a hard time. Oh yeah. Uh, another strategy that doesn't work, which a lot of schools for at least a while were really pushing hard for, is using a binder. And mm -hmm. I mentioned that a little bit before, but think about a binder. You know, you have to open it. You have to find where in the binder you want to put. You know, where's my math? Art, or do I even have dividers in it? And now I have to go to math and I have to turn it to that. And then I have to open the rings and I have to put the paper in or the other way around and take it out and or I have to punch holes. And that's just absolutely ridiculous to yeah. think that anyone would want to do that. I have executive function skills that are pretty strong. And <laughs> I figured out pretty early, I cannot use binders. <laughs> no, I'm like, no, I don't care what you tell me. I'm not. Um, and even if they have those little folders inside the binder, sometimes right. those are hard. Like that's why I would recommend yeah. uh, using an accordion folder or something else that doesn't have so many steps. Right. Um, and so, yeah, uh, 
a binder, I would, I would say, don't do it. <laughs> and do homework in bed. That's another strategy that uh, people often use that I just don't recommend. Yeah. Um, first of all, you don't probably have all your stuff that you need. Right. And, and obviously bed is really meant for a couple of things and not homework. Right. So <laughs> Doing homework in bed is not an organizational strategy that I would recommend. Yeah. Um, so that's why I was talking about having a sacred study space. And that's, that's a much better way right. to approach your work. Yeah. And also just in general, forcing a strategy on someone, I think um, that's not a good organizational strategy because right. uh, people need to be willing to use it. Mm -hmm. So if, if, you know, I, somebody once hired me after they said they started working with another coach and that coach came in with here, you have to use this binder, these folders, this, you know, every, she gave them everything they had to use this planner. And I was sort of surprised because I, I really, I said, it's, you know, it's a trial and error thing. First of all, you can't absolutely demand that every student do the exact same thing. Everybody thinks differently and it just, you know, that doesn't make sense. So I have a hard time when parents say, oh, I bought them this. They have to use this. They have to use that. I spent yeah. the money on it, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I just can't guarantee that's going to work. So yeah. that's that's something that is um, that can be challenging. Yeah. So once you found that like optimal or I guess like the the strategy that's working for your kid, what do you do to help them optimize that? What do you do to make it the best strategy and keep them on track? Okay, um, sure. So once you find, and hopefully, you know, the, the parents will uh, recognize, you know, I just, well, I guess I just want to recognize that parents who get in touch with me often, you know, asking for help for their child, they often have their own organizational challenges. So right. Um, they, you know, apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> so, so normally I say, you know, it's important for parents to model that those skills and, right. and keep them going, but sometimes that's just hard for parents to do. And I, I, you know, it varies parent by parent. So parents can spend, you know, maybe up to a half a day or just a couple of hours helping their child set up their sacred study space. So helping them make sure that it's, an area that's not cluttered, it's well stocked, it's inviting to the child. So, you know, having colors around that the child likes or a calendar on the wall that they choose. Yeah. Um, so, and, and to actually schedule a time to do that with the yeah. child. So <laughs> having a plan, <laughs> we are going to work on your sacred study space on Saturday at 3 p.m. Right. So, uh, and that's modeling that type of behavior too, of staying right. organized. And um, I would say buying things that the child likes instead of forcing things on them, you know, having the child go to the store with you and right. and choose, you know, the color coded folders instead of binders to have things that are attractive to them. You know, maybe they want a paper planner and they want one with flowers all over it. Yeah. OK. You know, and then also for some people ask me about lockers, something mm -hmm. that it depends on the school and whether parents are allowed in because I know for a while they weren't, right. but sometimes uh, kids could use help setting up their lockers initially. So having, you know, like little shelves in there or little containers where they can put extra supplies that they don't need to carry in their backpacks. So just kind of helping them set that up. And then maybe once in a while going in and just being like, Hey, let's, let's take a look at your locker. Um, I haven't been able to find this water bottle. Maybe it's in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, just kind of um, doing some maintenance over right. time. And, and the same thing goes with backpacks. You know, I said having a weekly backpack overhaul right. would, would be helpful. So going through their backpacks, you know, starting out where parents are there with their child. And then as kids get older, they should be able to do it on their own with just like a quick reminder or, or a question. Have you gone through your backpack or um and also a suggestion is just for parents not to feel like they have to do everything all at once because mm -hmm. it can be really overwhelming both yeah. for the parent and for the child. So, you know, like do little bits, baby steps, yeah. and that's baby okay. <laughs> <laughs> and would you say like maybe start with having the 
the backpack like once a week kind of a thing and then maybe build up to other smaller steps that you do frequently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean the the yeah, starting out with the backpack once a week um and then just nor- like as a normal habit it's right. starting to form that habit of okay, so when you come home what are you going to do with your backpack? Mm. Okay. I'm going to open it. I'm going to take out my, whatever I need. I'm going to take the water bottle out and any food that I left in there, you know, just sort of like do that clean out that day, (laughs) each day. It's just a habit. Just like, you know, you brush your teeth. You also have to clean out your backpack. So, or just take out a few things, take out one thing. I mean, I have a student who has been carrying these books around she's a novel reader and she has like four books that she's carrying around. Her backpack is so heavy. And so I even put it in her, I had her write it in her planner that she needed to take out two of the books. And we went through, you know, when are you going to do it? And tell me where you're going to like envision. Okay. I'm going to go home. I'm going to take the books out. I'm going to put them on the shelf. Um, So anyway, but yeah, having sort of a plan that is just regularly in place that that they can just build into the regular schedule is super helpful. And the same goes for that sacred study space. You know, I was thinking how it's important to at the end of the day, you know, after they're finished studying, okay, just take a quick look around and do you need, you know, are are things in their place? So everything should have a place and just real quickly put those pencils back in the container or recycle those papers, you know, the, the rough drafts or whatever yeah. that you don't need. Um, and really the, that time should be less than five minutes. I mean, and I, I also will even set a timer. And I've done this with my own kids where it's yeah. like, okay, how long do you think this is going to take to clean up this desk that you just were sitting at? Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, it's going to take 10 minutes. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to set the timer. Let's see how long it takes you. And then they quickly run out like, okay, throwing it all in the, wherever it needs to be. Right. And it's like, okay, that was 30 seconds. Yeah. Seriously. You know, <laughs> it sounds overwhelming, <laughs> but yeah, t- time estimation is another challenge with executive function. So right. I see it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the home study. We've got your sacred space at home and um, we've got some of the skills in place to be organized once you've gotten home. But what can teachers do in the classroom to maybe help the organization like go from school to home so that parents aren't like, freaked out when they come home with just paper stuffed in a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So teachers should leave time for students to get organized. You know, mm-hmm. they should have it built into their schedule where it's like, okay, time to put your planners away and, you know, get your backpacks and make sure you have what you need. Or let's look at the planners, everybody look and see, you know, and this is obviously more of the elementary age than the yeah. than as kids get older, but um, you know, what, what homework is there? What do you need having, and there could be a checklist that I actually just talked to one of my students' parents yesterday. And we talked about having a, like a luggage tag or something on the backpack. Ooh. So hanging off so they, they can kind of mark maybe with a dry erase or something where they know, okay, I need my, the novel and my, uh, laptop or tablet right. And, um, you know, whatever else, the, the, the take home and back to school folder. And that's another thing that, that teachers should have. So whatever the kids need, they should have some kind of checklist and the teacher can kind of monitor, okay, are they taking home what they need to take home? And so having those things in the backpack and then having teachers, you know, pay attention to those kids who really are having struggles with, Uh, remembering to bring things home and they could even offer, you know, incentives or positive reinforcement, you know, build up points. And as you, you know, bring home everything you need or bring it back to school, then you're going to get points for staying organized and then maybe build up to a reward because I wouldn't, I wouldn't take points away if they didn't do it, but, you know, just kind of (laughs) incentivizing, uh, staying on top of things. Um, But, oh, and I had mentioned about the folders. So some schools have a folder where on the left side is things that should just go home and stay home. And then on the right side, or it could be the other way around, 
things that should go back to school. Um, So homework that needs to be done goes on that side. And then they, you know, remember, okay, I need to bring this back. Uh, It's trickier when they're learning and doing a lot of their homework online, but Mm, even just for permission slips or things like that, they need to bring them home and have them signed and bring back to school as opposed to, oh, you you know, here's your test, just bring it home, show your parents and leave it at home. You don't need to keep carrying it back and forth. So having, having a folder that is specific for, for the going back and forth, that, that should be um, something that to be considered as, as yeah. part of that traditional, you know, what goes in the backpack. Um, and then teachers can, what else can they do? I mean, really, they can just model ways to, you know, as the kids get older, just maybe model ways to organize papers and let the mm-hmm. students choose, you know, it right. doesn't have to be a certain way. But here's, you know, I noticed you're having difficulty. Do you want to try this or here's what I do and so just making suggestions and and then later as they get even older you know asking students what are you trying to accomplish or what materials do you need so cueing you know and having them think on their own because ultimately we're trying to help these kids become more independent and so we can't just have the teacher constantly doing everything for them and same with the parent we want to step back and let our kids figure it out as well yeah I really loved your luggage tag suggestion. I think that would be fabulous because I think sometimes part of the problem with kiddos is that the stuff that's in the backpack is like out of sight, out of mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, it's, I don't see it. So it doesn't exist. <laughs> right. and so having that luggage tag, something on the outside of the backpack that they can be like, did I bring blah, blah, blah. And then it prompts them to like actually look in their backpack and mm-hmm. make sure that they've got it all. I think that's genius. <laughs> Thank you. Now I have to find one that's basketball themed because I want it to be something that he's going to want to look at, you know, right. so now I have to do a little shopping just to, <laughs> you know, the mom and I are going to kind of put our heads together and think, yeah. okay, what would he like? Oh. And that's just another thing that I don't want it to just be some boring tag, you right. know, right. or he can decorate it, whatever. We just oh, have to come up fun. with something that he'll want to look at, you know, and he'll remember to do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so I think I started asking you this earlier, but I, I wanted to ask you it now, which is <laughs> once you've got that kiddo organized and they're doing their backpack every day and they've got their take home and take back to school folder, all of that, how do you help them maintain that organization, the from home to school and also their sacred study space? The sacred study space, um, I would say, you know, just making sure that they are spending those five minutes at the end of the time that they're doing their work, just really quickly putting things away. And in terms of the backpack, you know, doing it on a regular basis. So starting even just, you know, once a week or however often makes sense, kind of, you know, track and see when do things start to get cluttered up. I mean, if it's, it could just be a quick peek in there. Um, and if things aren't cluttered, then that's, that's good. Right. Um, but, and then, and then really, I would say, recognize that and, and tell your, your child, wow, you're keeping things really organized. You don't mm-hmm. even have to do anything. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Um, but, or just, you know, if it's still a problem or still, you know, it's still a mess, then just plan those times that make sense to have the the parent be like, okay, let's let's go through this and and we really need to spend some time. And maybe, you know, should we look at other ways that you can keep things organized? Would you maybe want a different backpack that yeah. has different spaces that you can put things in? Because right. maybe there's just one big hole, but no little areas to, you know, put extra stuff that kind of gets right. lost at the bottom. So just you know, kind of rethinking, do we need a new organizational strategy uh, that we can, or a new format or something? Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then this was my last question for you, but do you have any anecdotes that you wanted to share? <laughs> I can tell you about Sam. Okay. <laughs> I worked with Sam and he won't mind that I'm using his real name. Okay. Uh, Sam, I started with Sam when he was in seventh grade and yeah. And he actually, he just started college. So we have, oh. we have a long-term relationship. We have yeah. a couple of students like that. It's, they're close to my heart. So 
uh, one time, well, every I used to go to his house and he had, he was a binder kid okay. and he had a huge, like the biggest binder you could find. I don't even know how many inches it was, but it was massive. Oh and he gosh. actually then decided to have two binders, one for his morning classes and one for the afternoon oh, classes. Oh, Cause geez. it was so much. Oh. I mean, that was probably like 10 inches of binder. I don't even, I don't know, but it was a lot <laughs> and or binders, you know, five inch binder for each right. part of the day. Ooh. So he had so many papers. I like for the end of the year, I, I lifted his binder. I'm like, there's no way that you need to be carrying this around. It, no. It's ridiculous. This is like harmful for your back and everything else. So I said, you know what, go get the recycling bin and uh, we are going to sort out your binder. Oh, I said, get a recycling bin and a scale. <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally weighed. I mean, I had him get on, you know, we we paired the scale or whatever, you know, right. I had him get on and then, and then get on with the papers. And right. uh, so we started out and the, the binder was... <laughs> I don't know if we actually had the binder with the papers, but either way, we I think we did have the binder and it was six extra pounds. Oh, it was crazy. Oh my gosh. So, I mean, he, he still laugh about this, I'm sure. <laughs> so we, I'm like, there's no way you need to be carrying six extra pounds around. So let's no. see what we can do here. So we went, he went paper by paper and separated out. I need this at home. Like, I don't need to be bringing it back and forth. I'm going to file it at home for later, if I, you yeah. know, for a future exam. I'm going to, I need these things at school because this is our like current unit that we're working on. And we right. did this through each class. And then also all the junk that he didn't need that wasn't even in the rings necessarily. It was just you know, being, it was just shoved in there, Oh God! <laughs> not in the right class spaces. You know, there was math in the history area. It was a disaster. So he, Oh, that's where that was, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he, um, put a whole lot, I mean, a ton of papers in the recycling bin and, and oh, he got God. that binder down to just like, I don't even know if it was a pound, but it was, it was a wow. huge change. And at that point, he didn't even need both binders because right. once he went through both of them, it was like they were basically empty compared to what they had been. Uh, yeah, so uh, that was that was a huge relief. And I, I just that was an eye opener. And I've done that with a couple other kids with weight. But it was Sam wins the prize. I mean, six yeah. pounds was just yeah. <laughs> beyond oh all those trees. Too. Wow. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my, that's one of the anecdotes. And the other one I was thinking was um, related to clearing up the clutter, which I basically already said before. Um, and this relates to time management where yeah. students are overwhelmed by the idea of organizing their stuff or, you know, putting things away, decluttering. Um, and so I like to do an activity where depending where we are, I'll have them you know, I'll say, well, how long do you think it'll take to do X, yeah. uh, whatever it is, like write a list or do something. And I mean, I did it with a child recently to play a quick game of Uno and he thought it would take 10 minutes and it took three. So, you know, they, they have no idea. So yeah. I had, but the one I was going to share was that I had a student named Bella whose house I went to and the house was extraordinarily cluttered yeah. overall. And so I just said, I wanted to show her how quickly you could get something done to declutter or just yeah. organize. So I said, how long do you think it will take to empty the dishwasher? And yeah. she had never really emptied the dishwasher. She was a middle schooler, but I guess, you know, her parents did it. And yeah. she just thought, no, that, that takes 20 minutes. She thought 20, yeah, that will take 20 minutes to take the stuff out and, and put it into the cabinets. So I'm like, you know where everything goes, right? Yeah. Okay. So I set the timer and he just went at a normal pace. He didn't even rush around doing it and yeah. he put everything away and I turned off the timer five minutes. <laughs> and so I, it wasn't an empty, you know, it was, it was a pretty full dishwasher. Right. It, it had a good amount in there. So, and I use that example with my own kids, you know, yeah. we've timed it, you know, we know this is pretty, pretty quick. So right. just Keeping those two things in mind, um, you know, just not needing to carry around a ton of papers yeah. and then just that binder thing, get rid of it. And then also, you know, just overhauling once in a while. And and same with understanding how long it takes to do those simple things that will right. keep us more organized. Yeah. Wow. 
Well, this has been fabulous. And I thank you so much. <laughs> thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Absolutely. Like I said, this is awesome. And I think it's a good point in the year where, you know, we're past the beginning of the year where everything is nice and neat and organized. And people probably need a little bit of info <laughs> to be like, how do I? My kid's binder is starting to weigh two pounds. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully no more than that. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for being here. This is a fabulous um, episode and I appreciate all of your helpful tips and, and strategies. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much to the audience for listening. Make sure to subscribe and leave us a little rating and review. It helps other folks find the podcast and we'll chat with you next time.